Tangrams consists of two analog ADSR envelopes and a pulsar section on the left here. Each envelope has attack, decay, sustain, and release sliders, a three position switch for setting time range, so fast envelopes, medium speed, and slow speed, manual buttons for generating the gate for each ADSR, and a status LED to show what the output is. Down here, we have the controls for the two ADSRs. So they each have a gate and the gates are normaled. If I plug in an external gate, both envelopes will fire. They each have a retrig, which is useful if you are playing from a keyboard and you're playing legato, meaning you hold down one note and then you press another one. This will allow you to re-trigger the envelope even though you're holding it high. The retrig can be used for some other effects as well. So here I have gate patched to the FSR. And whenever I hold this high, because it's receiving a constant retrig from Metropolis, we're gonna get a repeating ADSR trigger. But it only happens when this gate is high. So it's like a gated repeating envelope. Another common application for this is if we use both envelopes and one is for the amplitude and one is for filter cutoff. So right now, both envelopes are being triggered, but I'm going to re-trigger one of them with this faster pulse. Both of the ADSRs have a VCA input jack. So one of the most common applications for this is for controlling the output level of the ADSR. So in this example, I'm going to just manually control this with a DC voltage from the Duat. So I'll patch that in here, and then I will gate the ADSR from Metropolis. And as I turn down this level, the output level goes down too. The way this VCA works is internally, there is a linear VCA that is being controlled by the envelope. And the input of the VCA is this jack, and this is normal to eight volts. So without anything patched in, this envelope controls the output of this VCA, and that gives you the zero to eight volt range. When I patched in a DC voltage here, I'm now changing what that output range would be. So if I put this to two volts, let's say, then that means the output is now going to be zero to a maximum of two volts. And in this way, I can control the level. I can just keep turning that down. But by doing it this way, there's some other things that you can do. So for example, if I change this to a negative voltage, then the output range of the envelope will be a negative value. And even more useful is that I can just straight up plug audio into here. And now the envelope is multiplying that level. So you can actually skip what we've done here, which is connect to an external VCA and you can just use this internally. So now you can see I've patched the audio into the VCA, the output to our audio output, and I'm gating it from here. You can see instead of the LED being green to just show a positive DC voltage, you're getting orange because it's going uh, bipolar negative and positive. So you're getting the mix of red and green together. This configuration also allows me to do through zero modulation. So now I have the second envelope patched into the FM input of the Dixie. Look at that zap. And this is being controlled by the Duat. So I'm getting a five volt value normal here. And as I turn this down, the size of that FM envelope gets smaller and smaller. But then since this is a bipolar control, as I'm going negative, I'm now getting inverted modulation. You can do the same by just patching in a LFO. So here's another example of using a combination of these features. I've got this VCA input connected to the Dixie. I have the output going to the SVF1U filter and that filter is being modulated by envelope two. I'm gonna sequence it with Metropolis. So just a basic subtractive sequence. And now I'm gonna patch 
the gate from the second sequence into the retrig. So this is now re-triggering the envelope that is modulating the filter on every note. So we're getting a more interesting pattern that way. Over on the left side here, we have the controls for the Pulsar circuit. And this was inspired by the trapezoid generator found on the EMS Synthi AKS. The way that function generator works is you have a on time and a off or wait time and controls for attack and decay. So if I put this ADSR with decay at zero, sustain at max, I have essentially the same thing I just adjust the attack and release. So by pressing this trigger here, I can start the function. So you can see a single trigger caused it to rise, hold, and release. What we're listening to right now is just the bifold being opened up because this works as a VCA, so we're getting this texture. This is a great way to get interesting drones for ambient stuff or uh, really a whole bunch of other applications but it's especially nice i find with longer envelopes especially because you don't need to hold a gate for a long period of time you just use this short trigger so the reason you have control over off time is when you want to cycle it so if we flick this switch you can see that it's on here and then this is the timer for the waiting time or the off time. So I can make this interval bigger. So I'm adjusting the timing of the loop, but I'm not actually changing the character of this first envelope because the gate is the same and these sliders are the same. But I can have a longer interval or a shorter interval. If I put this to zero, then basically it's repeating every time that it goes low but because we have some release on, we're not hearing that repetition. So right now with this switch, I have pulse one routed to ADSR one, but I could also select pulse two to be routed there or turn it off in the middle. Likewise, with this switch, I can select pulse one to be routed to ADSR two pulse two or off. And both of these times can be voltage controlled here. So, so if we put a LFO, I can also choose whether I want pulse one or pulse two to come out of this jack. So one way to think of this circuit is as a trigger to gate converter where a short trigger generates a variable length gate. And another way to think of this is as a gate delay circuit. So if I route pulse two here, there's a delay set by timer one before pulse two fires. So here I have pulse one going to ADSR one and pulse two going to ADSR two. And so we're gonna get this overlapping, almost quadrature-like sequence happening. So I have the bifold on ADSR1 and the second envelope is going to the SVF1U to open up a filter on another Dixie. Now I have both of them triggered at the same time. Or I can invert.
in single shot mode, I can have this sequence trigger one time only. So far, I've been manually pressing the trigger to start the pulsar or setting it into cycling mode, but you can use this start input here to trigger that from an external device. One difference with timer two is you can see down at the bottom right is an infinity symbol. So when the timer is in this position, it's basically on forever until you restart the sequence. So then it's just gonna hold high. Yeah. 